Hello everyone, Crydex here. Welcome back to our space exploration playthrough. So, um, in between the last episodes, I've done a few things, one of which was work on speeding up my cargo rocket part crafting, especially since we have brilliant plates now, they're half as cheap, essentially. Um, so we're going to need a lot of those, and I've used quite a few in between the last episodes, because one thing I wanted to do was make sure we had enough vulcanite. We're still low on vulcanite, but that's because... Our uh, cargo pad is unloading here. I brought back a shipment from the Ogun planet. Um, I also wired up a signal receiver here that will fill up these, what are these called? Cargo rocket silos based on what I'm lacking. Because this is supplying two different types of resources, I can't just simply launch it uh, once in a while. I need to kind of decide how much of each one I'm going to put in. And then that is connected to this warehouse that's holding vulcanite blocks, and that's connected to this warehouse which is holding the crushed holmanite. So I want to make sure I have at least 5k holmanite or this alarm is going to start blinking at me, and then I think this is 10,000 vulcanite blocks or this alarm will start blinking at me. So that way I make sure I maintain a stockpile of those. I also have the cryonite rod alarm. And I probably... I th okay, I did, yeah. I put a beryllium ore alarm as well. So if that drops below 10,000, then that starts alarming, and we can easily launch another beryllium rocket from space. Um, I also accidentally... You'll notice here I have a lot of cryonite rods in storage because I decided I was going to take a lot of cargo rocket parts. These are the packed sections. So I took 250 parts plus the rocket reusability means about 300 parts and two extra capsules. So I was taking enough for three launches and I accidentally went to this planet, which is where my cryonite is coming from. And so this planet has a lot of cargo rocket parts, which is good. And since this planet has its own fuel processing, I'll have cryonite rods essentially forever without having to add more to this planet. And then at some point, I'll also want to be collecting, uh, I don't know if there's any on this section of the map, yeah, some of this Vita Melange, uh, which I think there's a huge patch in this vicinity. So that will be on the list at some point for bioscience. Um, another thing I did is I started crafting some Holmium cable, because we got that researched with energy science, and I'm adding that into our processing units. Because essentially what that does, and I know I've mentioned this before, is it cuts the cost in half of the other ingredients, but it adds in four holmium cables, which means two holmium plates and two plastic bars. But what's interesting is we already needed two plastic bars for the red circuit. And so we, we lose a red circuit and gain two plastic bars from holmium cables, so that's really just a, a washout in terms of plastic. And so we're essentially adding in two holmium plates and saving 10 electronic circuits. We're also saving the cables and the, um, what else goes into these? We're saving the circuits and the cables that go into the red circuit, because all we're spinning is the plastic. And then we're saving, you know, half of the sulfuric acid as well, which really is kind of negligible in the first place, but now it's even more negligible. So I went ahead and did that. And then I think I put a request in to bring Holmium cables up to the space station. Yeah, we've got a thousand loaded up here. And I also changed this blue circuit production over here to use Holmium cables as well. Because, again, just trying to make everything as cheap as we can. And at some point we'll get Iridium and we'll be able to make heat shielding more cheaply. And then we'll also get the Aeroframe scaffolds, I think they're called which make low-density structures a lot cheaper. You know, an aeroframe scaffold is essentially just two beryllium plates, and I assume we can use productivity, so it's even less than that. And it takes us from needing... Gosh, I mean, the savings are huge here. So we go from 10 glass down to 2, so that saves us 8 glass. 5 steel down to 2, so 8 glass, 3 steel, and 8 plastic which is just kind of insane to me how much we save on low density structure. All for just four beryllium plates. So, I mean, 
that's going to be great once we get that. I think to get that, though, we need another level of science. Yeah, we need Astro 2, which we are not at yet. And I don't want to do Astro 2 because I want to work on Energy 2 to get beacons first. Uh, another thing I did, there was quite a few little things. I needed to get more coal, so I set up another coal mine up here, which just connects up with our previous coal area. Um, stone, I've run... Oh, that's the old copper mine. Um, I've run low on stone. Here it is. So I hadn't put miners up here yet, and I probably will need to put an entire stone mine over here. And that's still close enough, I might just belt it rather than use trains. I also need to upgrade my trains to use all four cargo wagons at some point because I remembered ore can only transport 2,000 per wagon because they only have 40 slots. So I really need to use all four slots, um, but that's something I'll do off screen at some point. I'll just put it on my to-do list. Um, and then what else have I done? I think that's pretty much it. I also realized through some discussion with some people on the Discord that solid rocket fuel is a better choice for sending two planets to fuel rockets for the way back because 10 solid rocket fuel makes 500 liquid rocket fuel, but I can use productivity modules in it. And I don't need to deal with barrels. So probably easier than packing a bunch of these liquid rocket fuel barrels in, though barrels are simpler. Uh, if I'm really low on power and I don't have the the power for productivity fuel processing of the solid fuel. It might just be easier to bring these, but definitely an option. And I think that's all I've done. Oh yeah, one other thing. I set up module four, just basic processing with a requester chest and a provider chest. And so these guys will begin to fill up. I don't have iridium plates, so I can't make speed four yet, but I do have holmium and I do have vulcanite, which is what prod four and efficiency four use. So these efficiency fours are really powerful. Um, I imagine I'll be able to use those to, to save a lot of power on maybe planets with difficult solar. And then prod four is just the next step up from prod three. You see, I already grabbed a stack of 50. I'm not entirely sure where I want to use these first. I, I could work on mass producing them, but as of now, I don't have quite enough to put everywhere. They're very expensive. You know, they add another five processing units and then they use three of the prod threes, which are already expensive. The Vulcanite blocks and the machine learning data are fairly cheap. I just need to bring the machine learning data back from space with me. Um, but you can see, you know, it bumps up the energy consumption at another 20% from 80 to 100 and then speed, another 5% subtracted and then productivity another 2% gained, and pollution I don't care a whole lot about. So, in any case, what we're going to do is look into Energy Science 2, which I don't think I have set up a chain for. So we're going to do it separate from Energy Science Pack 1, but being fully aware that there's a lot of overlap with Energy Science Pack 2, because they use a lot of, you know, we still use energy catalogs and energy insight and all that jazz. So. So for now, we're just going to see what all even goes into this. I'm going to go with the same... Okay, we want to unlink the blocks here. I'm going to go with the same um, 8 per minute as my baseline. So we have plenty of Holmium cables. That's easy. Significant data we already are working on for the other ones. We already have Energy Insight, and unfortunately, we need four of our Energy Science Pack 1s to make Energy Science Pack 2s. So half of our output from that chain will go into this chain. So then we really just need to produce, I mean, this is already producing a total of 0.6. Okay, so most of our insight production actually goes to significant data. So I probably should look into how do I circuit everything so that I can use, I actually should research it. Or did I research it? Um, I'm thinking about the one that combines the blue and the pink because colors are easier to say than words sometimes. Uh -huh. It's one of these. Yeah, I did research it. Okay, so this one, I need to figure out how to circuit everything so that I use this one when I have the insight for it, but then I go back to the other ones when I don't. 
because that's where a lot of my insight is going for both astronomic and energy. And if we combine them, we get six instead of four, essentially, for, for my trouble. And that means we're using less blank data cards, which is good. Um, I do need to super cool some thermofluid, but I think I have the recipe for that already. So I do want to look into that potentially before I go to energy science too, but let's look at where these broad catalogs come from. Cause that's really the only thing I'm going to worry about here. Cause I mean, let's look at this. So let's say I make this just from pink. We'll need half as much insight as I did before, but I will be able to make energy insight from a catalog and a broad catalog. So the catalog uses four cards total and we get two insight and two cards back. Whereas if we do this one, we get six and two cards back for using eight. So we essentially use eight and get three fourths of it turned into insight. Whereas with this one, we only get half of it turned into insight. So definitely better rate there. Um, so let's actually see what that would look like. So we would need some more broad catalogs. You know, this original one is producing 0.4 catalogs per second. So broad catalogs need these four new types, subatomic, force field, atomic, and quantum. Quantum is just made in a laser facility and that's it. Okay, that's easy. Is that the one I'm already making? Hold on, you know, I'm gonna go to space. We've only got 130 slots here filled up, but we might as well launch ourselves up there. Uh, yeah, because these cargo rocket launches have become a lot cheaper now that I'm recycling about half of the sections and the sections are cheaper as well. Pulmonite is low, so I might need to launch another rocket from Ogun. Okay, and I'm guessing a lot of things are going to start running once our shipments come in here. Um, So, what was I looking at? Ah, yes. What am I already making here? Let's jetpack over. So, I'm already making radiation, polarization electromagnetic conductivity. So these are different. So I'm not making quantum, but this is very easy to make. I'm kind of surprised. It's just straight up fluid and a card and we get it. So that's easy. Atomic data. We need some more ion stream and material testing pack. Subatomic. We need proton stream, force field. We need polarization and electromagnetic which are the two I'm making, right? Yeah. So that's all interesting. We're making 0.4. See, this is such an interesting like <laughs> thing to figure out. Is do I even need? Yeah, let's let's actually throw science pack one in here towards the top. And then, yeah, let's assume we're making the insight for these significant data that I need for both, from both kinds of catalogs. And then let's actually make both kinds of catalogs. And let's see if my production from the original is enough to keep up with this. Because I was producing 0.4 of each of the originals. Yeah, so we only need actually 0.3 of each of those to go into my energy two input. And I only need 0.15 of these two. And then I need 0.15 of these other four. And so you can actually see that it gets more complicated, but it's more efficient overall to actually make energy science two than it is to make energy science one, which is a bit interesting. Now the power usage is a lot less because I haven't added in all the buildings yet, but it becomes more efficient, but more complicated. So in terms of, yeah, so we're gonna have to look at all of these still. 
So we'll look at these four are from the original. And then we'll look at, so I already did quantum and atomic. So now we need subatomic and force field. Oh, wait. No, that's one I already did. I already did force field and subatomic. Which two did I not do? I did subatomic and force field, so I need atomic. Oh, I already did all four. That's right. I just need the material testing packs. Okay, so like the total amount of ion stream I need for all of this is 37. And in this build, I needed 21. So I'll have to, you know, think about how to speed up my ion streams. We need, it looks like, okay, I must have miscounted something somewhere. It does look like we need slightly more polarization data and electromagnetic data. We need 0.44 of those to achieve all of this. But it's pretty close. And the only thing that I don't have yet is proton stream, which we need a very small amount of, which I need to research, I guess. So let's get going on that. And I'll need energy catalog too. And I'll need energy science pack too. So I might as well start all those. I already had it. So proton stream is just a small amount of plasma plus some iron. So we needed 21 plasma. So I may need to add another plasma building altogether because with the ion stream and the proton stream, that adds up to about 42 plasma, which is exactly double what I needed before. That can't be a coincidence. That's very interesting. It's very interesting how all these ratios work out. But we probably will need to add another particle accelerator for the ion. We'll need to add one for the proton and we'll need to add a plasma generator for the plasma stream overall, because I think I put all speed in these. So yeah, we need five, and I think we have three. Is that right? Yeah, we have three. So we'll need two more. Okay, so that's all good news. We won't need anything too crazy for any of this. The only thing I do need is super cooled thermofluid, which I believe is pretty easy to make. I need to make some more hypercoolers, but if we just search here for coolant. Yeah, hypercooling is just the next step. So it uses more of the warm fluid and makes more of the other stuff. And I think I'm not using these to full capacity. Oh, I don't have it yet. I thought I had the more efficient recipe. Let's see how close I am to that. Is it this one? Yeah, I need 500 astronomic. That's why I've been putting this off. But that will save me a ton of thermofluid in the long run, because I'll only use one unit to cool off 500. Whereas now I'm using one unit to cool off 50. So that will multiply that efficiency by a lot. It slows it down by a factor of two, so it takes twice as many to get the same output, but that's not too bad. And then the material testing pack. Oh, can I make those on the planet? It looks like I can, and I can use productivity. Delicious. So, I am going to make those on the planet. And they'll ship a lot more densely, I think. I mean, I'm assuming they stack to 100. Maybe I'm wrong. Nope, they only stack to 10. Whereas all of these stack to 150. So, stack, 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 two stacks. So, five stacks would make 10 stacks of testing packs. So, they don't pack very densely but I will get productivity on the planet. Is that worth it? Hmm. I mean, I think it is. Currently, I'm not needing very many. Now let's look at one minute here. Oh, never mind, it doesn't change the values. Okay, we'll just look at one just to see what the numbers are. So we only need one to one. So that's, I'm not going to need to bring up thousands and thousands and thousands, at least not yet. 
And I'll save a decent amount of these resources. Is that worth it? Yeah, I mean, the packing density is not crazy different. It's only a factor of two. So I think I'm okay with making them down on Navi. So we will actually try to deal with this from orbit. Let's see if we have everything we need. So first of all, where do I want to put it? How many do I need? It looks like they craft very slowly. So let's assume we have a beacon with full speed here. Okay, we only need two. That's fine. So we'll maybe make four for now. And... I hesitate to use this area. I might go down here. Just do something right here. And we will use... Oh, I can't access my blueprint book. So what I'll actually do is I'll copy one that I already have. We'll just copy this. And we'll paste it right here. And we will upgrade planner those. And we'll have to change the beacon. Which I'm not sure. I guess if I use a Helmod beacon, doesn't even matter which one, then maybe I can use the Helmod planner, get a blueprint for that beacon that I want, which is here. There we go. And then I can change these recipes by hand. Testing pack. Paste that. And I think that will do it. And now we just need the ingredients. Iron, copper, plastic, stone. Okay, well we can at least get these together on a belt. No reason to waste bots when we have a belt. And then plastic and stone. Do we have anywhere near here? It may just be easiest to use bots for those. Because I don't think the volumes of items here will be huge. So I don't see stone or... Am I looking closely? Yeah, I don't see it anywhere super close. I guess it's up here, but that's kind of a pain to bring down. And plastic's definitely not right here either. So we'll bring those in with a quester chest. Something like this. And then this is my output. And we'll put this into a provider chest, like so. These need to be powered. This will request, what's it called? Plastic. I think 200 is fine. This will request stone or I'll do 200. Put that on the close side of the belt. And I think that should do it. Now, they only stack to 10, so we'll actually just let this whole thing fill up. And then we'll put in a request for 500 up on the space station. And it looks like these are running. We still have plenty of power because we're not using all of it on the planet. I did add like three more solar farms with the old panels, but they still work. Oh, I need to rotate this guy. There we go. Okay, there we go. Material testing packs. And we will want to set our request. That was really cool, by the way, being able to build an entire chain remotely. Set our request here, testing pack, negative 500. And then 
I might actually do one of the one-time requests here. For an extra 500. Because I'm just getting everything fired up, so you always need more the first time around. So we'll need to give that a little while while we work on the rest of these things, but that way we'll have some when we're ready. So I do need two more plasma generators. Which makes me think I should probably put... Am I requesting the things I need for buildings in here? For example, accumulators. I should probably make this 300 because I need those for buildings. And I know I've got a lot of electric engines. I've already got 50 space assemblers. But maybe I'll even... We have 2k low density structure, so that's good. And I need laser turrets, to be honest. Because I want to make sure I have those for the buildings that use them. If I want to craft them in space. So we'll do one stack of laser turrets. Because here, we also need storage tanks and pumps. I think I did pumps, did I? Yeah, we have 100 pumps. So that's good. Because we are going to need another hypercooler, so we will craft the storage tank for that. And then, I may need more than one extra, but we'll start with one. And then we need some more particle accelerators, which need laser turrets. Ironically, laser facilities don't. We need more plasma generators, which need four electric furnaces, which I can craft eight of those by hand. And we'll just hand feed that. That'll take a second, though. So I think we needed... Maybe just one... Okay, we will need one particle collider for sure. And I guess I need a holmium cable. Put in that. That's the one that makes the, I think, the proton stream. We'll need one of these bad boys. Oops, I made two or three. I made two. And then we'll start with that. I'm sure I'll need some more supercomputers too, so why don't I just get that ball rolling with at least two of them. Okay. Oh, and then we needed the... What are they called? Whatever uses the furnaces. Plasma generator. There we go. Okay. So we've got all that. Our thermal fluid has run out. I wonder why that is. What are we out of? We're out of cosmic water. And we're out of cosmic water because of why? We're out of lubricant. Which is strange because I was under the impression we had lubricant being ordered up here. So here's my guess. We don't even have lubricant at all. No, we do. We have 200 right here. Did we really use it all that fast? Oh. There's no lubricant even ready. Okay, something's fishy. Do I not have a request? Oh, did I delete it? Like a goober? I did. That's right. Okay. So we need to... And I remember why. It's because I can make it out of Cryonite Slush now. So I need to use that recipe. So we're shipping up rods, acid, and um, heavy oil, and together we're making lubricant out of that. But I need a biochemical facility. Oops. And I need... So I need two biochemical facilities for that. Classic Factorio. Okay, so we need pumps, chemical plants. How many chemical plants? Six. So we're going to do that now. I don't need this many low density structure, though. I do need scaffolding. Which, at this point, I should almost just make a logistics request for it. Oops. There we go. There's a lot of it. Uh, I got the plus button. 
I think I'll just make it right here because it's fairly close to the other stuff I've been doing. Continue my somewhat spaghetti scaffolding here. Okay, so we need two of these, which we need more glass for. There we go. And then we will place those. Gosh, these things are huge. Okay. We'll try like this. See if that works. Though That might interfere. So we want to make lubricant and we want to make slush. Okay, so that I think is going to work. If we connect up slush we unbarrel need my space hotbar here we'll unbarrel sulfuric right there and we'll request crinite rods and we'll actively provide barrels out that should do the work and then We will unbarrel heavy oil here. I always like to have at least a pipe section in case I want heavy oil to go to something else too. So I can use the, because if I connect it directly in, then I can't access that heavy oil for something else. Kind of a just in case. Okay, and we will provide those barrels as well. We'll need some more bots, substations. Need some more active provider chests. This is emptying sulfuric acid barrel. Right there, we'll request a few of those. Request some cryonite rods, which it won't let me do. And then that should get us the lubricant we need. Now the question is, should I barrel it here? And I think the answer is actually yes. If I really start going crazy on how much I use. Because I've got plenty of bots up here. They can handle it. Bots only take power, so. And they crash once in a while, but I can make more. So we'll just barrel it. Fill request. We'll do that many barrels. Okay, so that makes me feel a little better, because now we're getting lubricant much more cheaply and densely packed, but that does explain why we were having issues before. Although this only crafts at 8 per second, that's actually quite slow. How much does this need? Okay, so 8 per second makes 80 cosmic water per second, so I'm not too worried about that, but... We might as well speed this up a little bit. 17, and now this needs to be sped up. Those do match perfectly, which is nice. With the slush amount. Okay, that'll do it. Nice little distraction there. So now our thermal fluid will start filling up again. And we need to go back to our energy science too. So we've got testing packs taken care of. Let's pin this. We've got testing packs taken care of. We need to think about... Uh, hold on. How did... Oh, right. <laughs> I saw this 315 and I started getting worried, but that's because I changed the amount here. To one per second which we definitely don't need that much okay so with speed modules we really only need and I think I was trying to balance two and two because these particle accelerators take a ton of power so we need two for ion streams and one for proton streams this beacon is not correct I just used that for the blueprint so one for proton stream will still do it. Everything else we have set up seems fine. I will need some particle colliders though for these two. 
That's unfortunate. I don't know if I have. Oh, okay. I already I do already have one of these, so I just need two of them. And then I need some more laser facilities. Probably just two. I don't think. Ah, uh, maybe I'll settle for one. And then I need some electromagnetics facilities, which I believe I already have, actually. And then I'll need more solar power, for sure. So I will encroach into my hypercooling loops. Another thing I've seen some people suggest online is that we actually do the cooling and hypercooling just for each build separately. So instead of having one for the whole base, uh, just because the amounts per second we're going to need will surpass what pipes can handle. But we, knew, we do know what we're doing with this. And we need the stone. like that and connect up the outputs there we go that's our plasma we need another ion stream which it looks like I can handle this with at least one more efficiency module in one of them and we'll grab from the same copper. Okay, we've handled that. We need one more of these to handle proton stream, which only goes into the particle collider. But it does use the plasma as well. So you know what? I'm not going to leave all this space open for cooling. Eh, maybe I will. I'll try not to use that space. We'll come down here. But I will need to connect up the plasma streams here. So I'll use one of those long boy pipes. Here we go. Oh, that's maybe too long. Shoot. Okay. We'll use the nine. Okay, so we hook that up, we will request the iron directly, make sure we got plenty of that, and then that goes into a particle collider, which we don't have, we do have, okay, I think we need one more though, because I'm guessing I can fix this one with a speed module, and that will be enough, because we need 1.2, crafting speed 1.4, that'll do it. This is the one that needs the hypercooling extra. So like that. Hook this up to the hot end. And then this needs to be the cool, which I can get from here. There we go. That should do it. That will provide, I think, enough. We need five per second. This can do five per second. Perfect. Or no, that's the wrong one. Where is it? Here. 2.89. Super cooled. Oh, wait. We need super cooled for two things. 2.41. So we'll put a speed module on this. That should do it. And then we'll hook up both of those to this output. And we also need one for the insight. Okay, maybe this was a bad placement, but we'll we'll settle. And then we need link data cards. And of course we're providing junk data cards as well.
So the way that I solve the problem with just saying, okay, you can only have one space, it, because then if a junk data card gets in here, then there's not space for the other things, or, or if there's the other things, I can't put junk data cards in, but I only want 50, is you can just use circuits to say, I only want to insert if the, and who knows what this is actually called, subatomic data is less than 50. So then we can leave all these squares open and then we can filter insert the junk data cards into an active provider. And so that's how you can kind of solve that problem. Okay, back to pinning this. So we still need, we already have polarization, radiation, EMP, and conductivity, and we're not increasing the rates on those. We're gonna keep that the way it is. So now we have subatomic. We need to go craft another laser facility or two. I think I have an EMP facility. Bots are really going ham right now. That means I'm using a lot of resources. I wonder how full the cargo rocket is. Yeah, we're at 350. It's just about time to bring up another trip. It filled in 2,000 more of the scaffolding because I grabbed all of it, but that's okay. Wow, all sorts of things. We still don't have anywhere near enough U-235 because I haven't, I need to put that on the to-do list as well. I just need to add a bunch more centrifuges that are beaconed to... Because I've got plenty of the 238. I just need to... These are so slow. I need to add a lot more of these loops. Um, but going back to space here. Let's see if we can craft one more particle collider. We need the holmium cables, which are scattered. There we go. And then we need EMP facilities, which I am quite certain if I do a logistics request. Of course, they're not called EMP. Electromagnetics facilities. Yeah, they will be delivered to me. I actually have five of them. Because I've overproduced those before. Oh, and then laser facilities. I don't know if I have extras of those. Laser facility. Let's find out. Ah, oh, we have one. Okay. That's good enough. Okay. So we actually are going to be able to finish this out here. Need some more space here. Well, <laughs> I guess, ironically, I need not space here, which is having space. Okay, bad jokes. So we need particle collider with the ion stream, which is here. So maybe I carry this ion stream to here. This is the ultimate spaghetti. I will not apologize though. Okay, and we kind of need to do the same thing we did over here, so I'm just going to copy this. In fact, I should probably blueprint this, because I'm going to use this type of design so often. I should probably delete some of the blueprints I'm not using, or make two separate books. There's just too much going on here. Okay, so we want this. substation. We're short on power, so we'll definitely need a lot more. We're, looks like we're stuck on energy science pack ones. Looks like we've run out. I really need to work on that insight blending to get more significant data. But for now, we'll finish this out. So we need to request 
Maybe 25 of each. I forgot to request on this one. Which worked out okay in terms of the uh, copy-paste settings for the blueprint, but we then need to get rid of not junk data cards, but contaminated scrap. Looks like we're going to get quite a bit of that. Contaminated scrap. And this is atomic data, so you need to say atomic data less than 50. Okay. And with a stack size of 8, it will, it'll fluctuate around 50 a little bit. Because if that ends up crafting 8, this drops down to 49, then it inserts 8 more. Now we're back up to 57. I'm okay with that. I could change the stack size to 1 if I really wanted it to be precise, but I don't think I do. Okay, we've got that, and then we need, <clears throat> excuse me, two more electromagnetics facilities using super cold thermal fluid and holmium cable. Can I fit those here? It looks like I can. And the super cooled fluid will come in from the top. And it will come out the bottom. And that doesn't connect because this is one of the super long pipes. And then we can connect. Of course, this RoboPort is in the way. We're just going to have to move it. That should do it for fluids. And then, let's see. Okay, we'll do this. Provider. We'll request. Some things. And then we will place in. Again, circuit conditions. Only if, I need to know the name, force field data. Force field data is less than 50. Copy the condition there. And then we want to actively provide, and I need a regular filter inserter here because you can only do one filter on the stacks. And we need to get rid of junk data and contaminated scrap. Junk data, contaminated scrap. Okay, so that's running. Oh, I'm not outputting. I thought I was. Is this not? Oh, wait. This whole loop is not connected back to the warm loop. There we go. That should do it. Okay, so we've got that, that guy taken care of. My power, I'm sure, is in shambles. Yeah. But we're almost there. Laser facility just needs cold thermal fluid. So we can put him wherever. I'd like to pack him in somewhere, but I don't think it's going to fit. Maybe right here. Maybe stretching it, but... We'll take it. Because this one's going to be a simple... Simple thing here. I don't really like this blueprint this way. I'm going to move that there. That's a lot cleaner. We'll put that in the blueprint book. And delete this one. And then junk data card is actually what we want to filter out here. So that, that works. Okay, so now we're producing quantum phenomena. Quantum phenomenon data. And now we just need two supercomputers. Probably one could do it making. Oh, wait, that's regular catalogs. Two supercomputers making broad energy catalogs, which I will put here. We'll leave some space. Connect up the warm thermofluid 
and the cold thermal fluid we can pipe over. here okay and then we need all the types of data in I'll do that on the back side and then we will produce one stack Okay, and it looks like the only one we haven't successfully produced is this one, the force field data, which is happening down here. Wonder what the holdup is. Ah, the holdup is where? It looks like we actually have some. We have nine. Why is that not being brought over here? Oh, it is. Okay. It's Atomic that we're having problems with. Oh, because I haven't brought up any of the testing packs yet. That's why. Okay, well, I'm not going to worry about that. And then these guys that we're making insight from just the simple catalogs. Now we can make insight from the broad catalogs. Except then we need super cold thermal fluid, which, oh, that really puts a damper on things. So much so, I don't even know what to do about it. Because this is perfectly in line with the regular thermal fluid. You know what? I'm going to put them right here. No, because these are using regular thermo, regular cold. We need super cold. Okay, we can figure this out. I will need one more hypercooler, though. And... I'm just gonna erase these. Because I don't need them anymore. We are gonna need a request insight for this guy, though. 180 is a bit steep. I'm going to stick with 36, which is one craft. So, let me don't need that or this. So I need one more hypercooler. Fly over here. Hypercooler. Storage tank. Craft. Put everything in. Take everything out. Place my hypercooler. We put them there. We want broad energy insight. We need to hook up the warm fluid, maybe here. And then hook up the super cooled fluid here. do that. This one will connect up. I should probably just connect here, actually, rather than there. And then the cold needs to come in, which we can get from here. Okay. There we go. And then we need requester. Provider. And that should do it. And we are going to launch our rocket. It's probably almost full by now. Yeah, 471. I think that's time to bring it up. Okay. And then we'll start getting these broad energy catalogs. And hopefully everything should be running. While that's all working, I'm going to go add some more solar panels. We'll add another two stacks to start with.
still have a few more, but I don't have enough space for them. That should help a little bit with power. And once I get Holmium accumulators, then we can store a lot more power for when we surge in our power use. Because I assume like right now is going to be a surge because I'm making more solar panels. Everything just arrived on the rocket. We're going to be doing all sorts of stuff. Which is fun to watch. These space manufacturers go real fast. But here we go. We're making that atomic data, which should be enabling our broad energy catalogs. Which we're going to speed up a little bit. If I remember correctly, I needed to do that. Our broad catalogs, yeah, we needed 2.89. So I think, yeah, one speed module should be good in both supercomputers. So we also need speed here. And we'll put efficiency because I'm having power issues right now. Might as well put some efficiency in these guys. Okay. Well, these are running. That's good news. And then I just realized we need to do the circuit conditions here because I also need to get rid of the... What's it called? Blank data cards. So this will only go if broad energy catalogs. Did I make it? I'm ridiculous. No, I'm not. Okay, sorry. I, I thought I had stopped making the regular energy catalogs, but it was the regular insight that I stopped making, which was correct. So this is actually insight that I need to be here. We'll go to 100, actually. And of course, that messed up the pickup position. Because when you copy, you copy both the adjusted inserter positions and you copy the circuit conditions. And then we want blank data card. Oops, I need to hit search. Blank data card in an active provider. Well, seems to be working. That's good news. Taking the insight to both creating energy science packs and creating more significant data. So everything seems to be functioning. So we can check energy science 2 off our list. And prod 4 modules, we can check off our list as well. We haven't fully automated the process, and I just now realized I forgot one big thing. need some more of those. I forgot to actually make Space Science 2, which I can't quite actually do, but I want to be ready for it. It will go in this manufactory. As soon as we unlock it, which looks like we're getting there. My power needs are still far from being met. <coughs> Excuse me. I guess part of that is because of these 100 megawatt particle colliders, which we can make a lot better here. And these EMP facilities, did I need? Let's see. So this is for the force field data. What if I only had three? Or even two. Yeah, let's do two and two. That will save a lot of power. And then... Did I need five plasma? Yeah, I did. That's 40 megawatts. And then... Yeah, it's these particle accelerators that really take the power. This one, though, I only need one without modules for the green stuff, so I can do something like this, and that'll save a lot of power. I do need 2.07 with 2 and 2. So I think I will just settle for this. 
I am t a tiny bit under creating, but that'll save me a ton of power. Which right now is important, at least until I get a ton more of those solar panels. And I can even get these flat solar panels soon. And I can actually build them. And by just adding one more mirror, which I already used four to make one of these flat solar panels, so by just adding one more and some holmium, we double the power output. So that's going to be way more efficient. So we'll research that once we have the ability. But really where I want to go first is these wide area beacons. I can craft them already with the things I have. I'll need lots of those energy catalogs, but I can put 15 modules in them, which is crazy, and then they have a 14 tile range. So being able to put those back on Novi to improve some of my original builds, and they can be a lot smaller, and then I can use less of the productivity module fours, I can really start making everything more efficient. Okay, so we need our little setup here. Copy. We'll just copy in what we need for five. This is for Astronomic Science Pack 2. Or, sorry, Energy Science Pack 2. And then Junk Data Card is the thing we want to get rid of. So there we go. I mean, we, we definitely don't have enough. Oh, we also need thermofluid. That's right. Okay, well, we can do that easily enough. There we go. So we have technically automated energy science pack two, though it will be slow to get there. But it is, I think, running properly. So we'll just need to make sure we keep sending up rockets from here. We're already back up to half of this rocket filled. So. And we're still... Oh, we're short on Holmanite, Beryllium, and Vulcanite. So I'll need to launch some more rockets from all of those places. Let's go ahead and see if we can launch a rocket from Ogun. Because that one is definitely ready to go. So we can launch him. And then we need more beryllium. I don't know if that... If I have enough stuff. I do, okay. That's ready to launch as well. But we will need to wait until the landing pad is empty. Because we only have one currently. Maybe I should have separate landing pads for each resource. That might be smarter. I guess maybe that's better. It's not that hard to have a landing pad. Hmm. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. I'll put that somewhere on the list. But we've automated Energy Science Pack 2. We're working towards big beacons. We will want Iridium after that, which we can then work on material science. And then eventually I'll work on biological science. But for now, we are we are running. We're still struggling with thermofluid. Now we're out of crinite rods. Didn't I just launch a rocket? Or am I making that up? Or am I just using that many to make lubricant? we're using one rod for 10 slush which makes 10 lubricant so five rods makes a stack so 20 rods or i mean 100 rods should make 20 stacks of lubricant didn't i bring up like 2000 crinite rods I, I was under the impression we had plenty yeah 2000 where is that going i wonder Thermofluid also only uses one per ten. Hmm. Yeah, it claims we have no crinite left, so somehow I'm using all of it immediately. So we will create a bigger request for crinite. 
for now. We've got plenty. We just need to bring it up, I guess. I didn't know we were using that much. Astronomic science seems like it's going nicely. We almost have 400. Well, I guess we have 200. We've begun towards 400. And there's 50 in each of these. So, I guess we are closing in on 400. Okay, well this is great. Our, our space platform is really starting to, to hum with multiple sciences. We will do some, some minor things in between this episode and the next one, but hopefully we can work towards getting those wide area beacons. We will need 500 of the energy science too to get there, I think is what it costs. Uh, where'd it go? We need 100 to get these solenoids. And then we need 500. So we will need 600 divided by our productivity, which is 1.6. We will need 375 of those science pack twos to be able to research all that. So that might take a little bit, considering we only get eight per minute. That's about an hour's worth of constant crafting. And that's assuming we're all supplied from the home planet. So we will need to work on uh, just kind of crafting things over time, but we're going. So I think I'm going to call it an episode here. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.